Hey guys and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel, it is Francesco here. Today I'm actually going to be passing over to Abby Emmons who is a YouTuber who talks all about writing and the reason why this is going to be an exciting video is because she's reviewing with us today an application called Scrivener. I know a lot of you guys have heard of this application and we also did a top 10 writing apps feature that may be helpful for if you're choosing a writing app, but Abby today is gonna to go through her own use of the application, dive into some of the features that make it so special for her, and also compare it to some of the other apps she's tried. Now, I'm really excited because Abby's someone that I've followed on YouTube for a little bit of time, and I've actually really enjoyed all of her videos. She does Writer's Life Wednesday, which is an exciting feature, giving you tips and advice, as a writer and how she sort of overcame those challenges, which is gonna be great. So I'd love to pass over to Abby today uh, and put uh, this video into her capable hands. You can subscribe to her below and some of our other relevant channels too. And also if you're brand new here, subscribe to Keep Productive as well. Anyway guys, so Scrivener Review by Abby. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm Abby and creativity is my passion. I'm what I like to call multi-talented, which basically means it's really hard for me to introduce myself. <laughs> I'm a writer, entrepreneur, singer-songwriter, blogger, traveler, and big dreamer. I run my own YouTube channel all about creating your dream life and staying happy, healthy, and productive while you're at it. I also have a channel just for writers called Writer's Life Wednesdays and a channel just for my music, original songs, and covers. Before I begin, I just wanna give a big thank you to Keep Productive for having me on their channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about Scrivener, how I use it for my writing life, my business life, my life life, <laughs> to stay organized and get stuff done. I first discovered Scrivener through an author's podcast and being a writer myself, I knew that I had to check this software out. And I'm so glad I did. Most people know Scrivener as writing software, but I find it incredibly useful for all sorts of things because unlike word processors, Scrivener is designed to basically be like a virtual office where you keep all your notes, all your files, all your folders, all your reminders, all your lists in one organized place. Of course, just like an office, Scrivener only serves you if you keep it functional and organized, right? So today I'm gonna show you how I do just that. So let's dive into the computer and take a look at this thing. Okay, so this is how I set up my Scrivener for success while writing. The Scrivener does have templates built into it for, for fiction writing, but I've found that this setup works best for me. I think it's great to just customize what works best for you. And that's the cool thing about Scrivener is that you can really customize it so much and make it the best work environment for you. So essentially what I have going on here in the binder is my pre-write task list, which is what I have to write before I begin to write the actual novel when I'm in the process of planning and outlining and plotting and doing all of that fun, I will create a pre-write task list and basically here I will list what I need to research, what I need to outline, what I need to sort, and any other questions I have about my book that I need to answer before I start writing. Next in the binder I have my manuscript folder and as you can see I have three folders within that, Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. That's because I write in um, what they call the three-act story structure. You might be familiar with it if you're a writer and um, you can read more about that online. Lots of articles out there about this three-act story structure. A lot of my favorite stories follow this structure and that's kind of why I follow it too. Then I have my research folder. In this folder I will create documents that usually are just copy and pasted articles or any other notes, anything that I'm learning, that I'm taking notes on, reading books. All my research, whether it's historical, scientific, or geographical, like whatever's going on in the book that I need to know about that I don't already know, all of those notes will go in my research folder and that's just kind of a nice way to keep them all organized. Next is my outlines folder. So first I have the three act story structure that I just mentioned and this is essentially what you'll see in a lot of articles online about the three act story structure. This is how it's all laid out and I'll go through here and figure out how my story that I'm developing fits into the three-act story structure. Next, I'll copy and paste that whole outline into what I call my short outline. And my short outline will be between 3,000 to 5,000 words long, and I'll kind of 
figure out what happens in the story start to finish. Long outline is very similar. I just embellish a lot of things, fill in a lot of blanks, make sure that I know exactly what happens, start to finish with nothing left out. I have to know everything. And that usually ends up being like 17,000 words long, roughly. The plot problem is just another thing to think about when I'm developing a story. Subplots, I will list by whatever character they're associated with. Usually there's a couple characters that have subplots going. Next, I have scene cards, which I also outline according to each act. My scene cards essentially look like this. I have a whole video about this on my Writer's Life Wednesday channel and how they, how the scene cards work, why they work for any scene in a novel. Next, I have my characters folder, which is essentially where I'll put my character profiles, and I have a whole series on my Writer's Life Wednesday channel for creating characters. The ultimate character profile, and I share my template, the questions I ask myself about my characters to develop them and create the most relatable and addictive characters possible. Next, I have the backstory folder, and that is backstory for my protagonist. If you watch my character series, you'll see there's that's a huge element in developing good characters, is figuring out their backstory. Next, I have a notes folder, and that is just random notes and stuff that I'm not sure where it's going in the outline or just things I have to remember. and. Um, the various other things, like if I'm starting to writing a blurb, I'll put that there. And then I have my trash folder where all my, uh, where my first draft goes. Just kidding. So this is the, the sort of template that I stick to every time. And the cool thing about Scrivener is that whenever you make a project and you make all these folders and you're like, I know that I'm always going to return to this and have the same layout, all these folders, and you don't want to go and make them again, you can always go up to file and then click on save as template and then once you type in a name and save it it will appear every time you go to start a new Scrivener project and you can just pick that template and boom it loads a whole new blank Scrivener project with all your folders already set up already named exactly what you want them to be so that is essentially how I organize and optimize my Scrivener for success while writing. Now for those of you who aren't writers or maybe writers who have a couple of side hustles going on, there are so many ways to use Scrivener for making sense of any project, event, goal in your life. So let's jump back into my computer and I'll show you how I use Scrivener to plan my life. So this is what I do every year to start my year out right and even a little bit before New Year's, I will start my Scrivener project for the following year. Now, I love Scrivener because it has all these features where you can put folders within folders and see the big picture of everything you have going on. It's a really nice way to organize things and keep them all in one place and also keep them offline. Like, I know there are a lot of apps online and stuff that you can use, but I don't know necessarily about the availability that they can go offline. So it's kind of cool to have this project that's constantly updating that's just it's just on your computer, it's just saved. It's a very simple format, easy to navigate. So this is my Scrivener project for 2019. Now I'm still developing it, so you're gonna see that it's not filled in that much yet, but I will start with a binder that looks like this. There's a folder for each month of the year, and then I also have a couple folders down here that are some other things in my business life that I have to keep track of, and that is my blog content, my YouTube content for my various channels, and my travel plans for that year. So up here you'll see at the top I have what I call big list of goals for 2019. So I make this every year at New Year's, and obviously I have not finished this list yet. It's gonna get way bigger because knowing me, I'm an overcommitter extraordinaire, so that's gonna be unrealistically huge list by the time I'm done with it. But for now, this is what I'm starting with. And then from there, we have the month folders. So I actually made a whole video on my productivity channel about planning a really productive month and how to get everything done. And I talk about the have to's and the want to's and how you have to really separate those two things and figure out what you have to do, plan those things into your month, and then figure out what you want to do because so often those things that we want to do get kind of tossed by the wayside, right? We kind of are like, well, those aren't important, so we never make time for them, but that is sad. So I like to list out before I start my month, just list out all the things that I have to do, the, the goals I have to accomplish, obligations I'm under, deadlines I have to meet, those will go into my have-tos list, 
and then my want to's list will be those unnecessary things that I'd really like to do and like to make time for and that I know I can make time for if I pay attention to my schedule and plan accordingly. So once I list all those things out, I will go about figuring out how to fit those things into my month. That's something I like to do on a paper calendar. So obviously I won't show that here, but I will break down my weeks like this and I don't have anything planned that much yet because it's it's still, it's not 2019 yet, but I'm going to plan this when the month gets closer. And I'll plan out like week by week, I'll just have a list, just a real simple bullet point list of things that I want to accomplish in that week. So that kind of holds me accountable to make sure I actually put in the work and get those things done. So I'm not just like, well, this month I have to do that, but then it never actually happens. So <laughs> that's important to hold yourself accountable, I think week by week. So depending on what kind of big goals, overarching big goals I plan for 2019, I will plan a little bit of these months in advance. Like, oh, I know in September I'm going on a road trip, so I'll start to plan some things accordingly. But other than that, I kind of just keep the Scrivener project as my go-to planner. It's a really nice layout for that, I feel. It's, it's simple, but it's also aesthetic and user-friendly, and I just, I love it. <laughs> it's great. So that's how I use Scrivener to plan, organize, and make sense of all the different things going on in my life, whether they be writing novels or business related projects or just things I want to do. Another thing I love about Scrivener is how affordable it is. You can get all this organizational beauty for just 45 bucks or if you're not sure about it, you can get their free trial. The trial is exactly the same as the full version of Scrivener, but it goes away after 30 days of use and 30 days of use doesn't mean just 30 days. It means if you use it every day, it will go away after 30 days. If you use it two days a week, it will go away after 15 weeks. And if you're using it every day, I mean, come on, just buy it. <laughs> then even if you have a project or 10 already going in Scrivener in your free trial, you just buy your license code, pop it in and your machine keeps running smoothly. I can't recommend this software enough. It has changed my life forever both with creating new worlds and making sense of this one. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please smash that like button, and be sure to subscribe to this channel, Keep Productive, because they have so many amazing, insightful videos. I just, I need to binge watch them all, and you should too. Then after that, be sure to check out my channel where I talk all about creativity, productivity, and chasing your dreams. Also, if you're a writer, you might wanna check out my other channel, Writer's Life Wednesdays, where I post helpful videos about writing every week. Dream big, stay invincible, and get Scrivener, okay? <laughs> Rock on. Shh.